there are still those that will get a severe case and end up having long-term lung damage and worse yet, they could even die. But how exactly does the coronavirus kill people? There is a ton of misinformation out there regarding the coronavirus. Some valid while others not as valid. Unless you've directly read or heard your information from the Center for Disease Control, the World Health Organization, or your doctor or healthcare professional, make sure you're being careful. That's why today I am breaking down how the virus affects your lungs, what actually causes a person to die from the coronavirus, and why it is important to practice social distancing and self-quarantine. Most people who get the coronavirus will end up having mild symptoms and no long-term lung damage. But there are still those that will get a severe case and end up having long-term lung damage and worse yet, they could even die. But how exactly does the coronavirus kill people? Today on my show, I'll answer that question. It's the one question that is asked most online right now. Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Wagner. I'm a board certified emergency medicine physician. And on my show, I answer your urgent medical questions and clear up myths about certain deadly diseases. If you haven't already done so, please make sure that you hit that subscribe button now and turn your bell notifications on. That way you're instantly alerted when I post a new video. So obviously most people know that COVID-19 causes the majority of the people to have flu-like symptoms and recover without any issues. But there are new articles and research coming out every single day on this topic with updated information. But as of the time I am writing this, the majority of sick patients from the COVID-19 novel coronavirus who die were on ventilators. A ventilator is a machine designed to provide mechanical ventilation by moving breathable air into and out of the lungs to deliver breath to a patient who is physically unable to breathe or breathing insufficiently. A good majority of these patients who passed away ended up having something called ARDS. ARDS stands for Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome, which is a rapidly progressing disease occurring in critically ill patients. The main complication in ARDS is that fluid gets into the lungs, making breathing difficult or impossible. There are a few steps that happen before getting ARDS where patients don't require a ventilator, but rather just oxygen and hospitalization, not the ICU. This isn't just isolated to the coronavirus, but to many viruses that we have every single year. Let me explain the lung anatomy a little, which will help you better understanding how this affects our lungs. The lungs are similar to two trees upside down that are connected at their trunks. As with a tree, the tree goes from one large trunk, then to large branches, out to smaller branches, and then to leaves. So does the lungs. It works in a very similar manner. See here in this simple image, you start with a the trachea, then to the main right and left bronchus, then further down to smaller and smaller branches, all the way down to the alveoli. The alveoli are very, very small sac-like structures and that's where the oxygen gets delivered into our bodies and carbon dioxide leaves our bodies. There are about 600 million of these very small alveoli, or say it leaves on a tree. So as the blood from the body comes to the lungs, it's called deoxygenated blood because the body, muscles, organs have used up the oxygen. The oxygen from the air makes its way down to the alveoli, then diffuses across this membrane to make oxygenated blood that circulates back to the heart to be pumped out to the body again. Now, when you have this virus, you get inflammation of your lungs. Just like any inflammation that you get in your body, you end up having leaking of fluid, which is a swelling that you get, like when you sprain your ankle and it swells up in size. The virus acts the same way in the lungs, causing things to swell up. In the lungs, you end up getting fluid interfering between the alveoli and the blood. ARDS ends up affecting the whole lung versus say pneumonia, which usually hits one or two spots in your lung, which viruses can also cause pneumonia. But remember, viral pneumonia won't respond to antibiotics. Antibiotics only treat bacteria, not viruses. So now with ARDS, inflammation occurs everywhere into all the little spaces and even more, the blood capillaries that are sitting with the alveoli become leaky and the fluid leak into the alveoli, which prevents oxygen from getting into our bloodstream and then to our body. That's when you become hypoxic and having oxygen levels way too low to support our body's normal functions. And you have an extremely difficult time breathing. This is when somebody ends up on a ventilator for oxygen and support. There isn't any way to speed this up or to slow it down. You have to be on a ventilator for support until time passes. That way the inflammation can decrease, the fluid can get reabsorbed by your body. 
and no, because I get this asked all the time. There is no way to stick a needle in your lung to pull this fluid out. But once this happens, the body over time reabsorbs the fluid. Oxygen will then be able to get delivered to your system without the support of the ventilator. The ventilators that we use provide necessary oxygen to the body, but it does much more and research has shown it. Three main studies have come out over the years to help us give anyone who ends up with ARDS the best chance for survival and a meaningful life. The first thing that we found was that having lower volumes of air per breath under pressure decreased mortality from 40% to 31%. But we found that carbon dioxide would build up due to this. So patients would end up breathing faster than the ventilator or what we call breathing over the ventilator, which wouldn't provide what was needed for the patient. Because of this, the second thing that we found was that paralyzing the patient and adding sedation allowed for the exact ventilations, pressures, and volumes to go into the patient. This dropped mortality from 41% to 32%. And lastly, the third way the studies have shown to improve mortality is placing the ventilated patient prone or lying them on their stomach for a majority of the hours in a day. With this intervention, the mortality went down from 33% to 16. With these three modalities to improve mortality and identifying patients who are in early stages of ARDS, we can really give these patients the best chance to beat this thing. I hope that wasn't too much medical jargon, but understanding how our bodies work helps everybody understand how the virus affects it. And I feel as an ER doctor, the more knowledge we have as a society, the less panicked we will be, and ultimately we will be able to make proper decisions as it comes to our own health and our loved ones. Now, all over the internet, there are articles and pictures about flattening the bell curve. What does that really mean? Most hospitals prior to this pandemic typically worked close or near capacity. I know at the hospitals that I work at, many times ICU level patients end up waiting in the emergency department for a bed in the ICU to open up. Now, if everybody gets sick at the exact same time and a small set of the population requires the ICU and to be on ventilators, as I described above for that reason, there won't be enough ventilators, ICU space, or even ER space. The point of the social distancing and closing of so many things is to reduce how quickly the sickest people end up needing the hospital resources. So if we can spread out when the sick people end up coming to the hospital, it will be less taxing on the system and everybody will be given the appropriate care versus people not even having a chance to battle this virus because they can't even get into the hospital. All right, that does it for me, Dr. Jordan Wagner. I hope I've given you more insight and information on how the coronavirus works and how it can potentially kill folks and why it's important to take these preventative quarantines seriously. Make sure you leave me a comment below if you have any further questions or if there are any other medical questions that you want to know about. And as always, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and turn your bell notifications on. Thank you so much for watching. Stay healthy, my friends.